color, or which it stands, our nation, under God, invisible, liberty, justice for all. Thank you. And Superintendent Tager, do we have any adjustments to the agenda? No adjustments, Chair. Okay. We'll move on to public comments. Uh, before we go to public comments, I do need to read a, a brief statement. Uh, members of the public may address the school committee for up to three minutes on school and education matters. Complaints or allegations concerning specific employees or students will not be allowed, but will be addressed through established policies and procedures. Public comments shall be directed to the school committee and be brief and not repetitive. The school committee's practice is not to respond or debate with the speakers during the public comment period. The superintendent or his staff will follow up on comments outside of the meeting as appropriate. Before starting, please state your name and place of residence. With that, do we have any public comments this evening? Okay, seeing none, we'll go on to superintendent's proposals and updates. Superintendent Taker. Yes, uh, first, uh, Bangor High School Principal Paul Butler and Athletic Director Steve Vanettestein will present a, the committee a proposal to install a Dactronics electronic scoreboard at Cameron Stadium. I'd love to jump right to installation. Uh, we've, uh, we've had a lot of uh, conversations around this, so my role tonight is to uh, share with you and to uh, uh, share with you the initiative, an idea that we had that's born out of the camera project, and to, uh, I guess, when we seek endorsement to move ahead in ways that uh, we gain some confidence. I'm saying thank you. And some uh, sense that it's worth moving forward, but of course, the conversations about growth and of nature like this are committee centered so that's why i'm here i appreciate the superintendent encouraging me he's been enthusiastic about the idea so i'd like to just share update and uh, answer questions and mr venestein's on call whenever you need me he's on the bench right now but he's uh... so I've, I've framed his initiative I'm presenting information about steps we've taken ideas that we explored where they come from and where we might go so we're calling it the uh, lvb that stands for live video board initiative and uh, just for uh, context, so in your time, as many board members, uh, in your time, Cameron's return to what we would describe as a first class regional venue. It's born out that way that our hosting last summer of the state track meet, and I say this in a teasing way, but this element of truth, I've been told in every little teasing joke that you do when the people from what I call the land of the beautiful people had to trek up to Bangor and compete in the state meet. They were blown away and because it's a first class facility it's it's in in so many ways returned to that regional coveted venue of choice and we're turning people away the mpa would host every event there there are people that come from every corner of the state to compete in bangor and they come they're blown away and they leave with reflection and sharing about what that uh, what that venue meant to the quality of the experience uh, but during that project, it was uh, in very good Yankee ways, it was scaled back to the uh, available funds. And one of the things that we had to sacrifice was a scoreboard. And the scoreboard, no disrespect to the old scoreboard on the left, if you're sitting in the stadium, you look to the left, served us well. It's a little tired. Uh, it was always planned that uh, a, uh, a more dynamic, interactive, larger scoreboard would be part of the mix. but other things uh, in the interest of completing the project. The scoreboard couldn't get completed, but a foundation was laid literally in at least two or three ways. Uh, in the scope of the project, uh, it was decided that even though we couldn't do the board, there's wisdom in putting the foundation in the ground. So we did that. And um, about a, for, it's about a third of the cost by descriptions I recall, about a third of the cost as you're tearing your land up, et cetera to put the foundation in for what you will eventually build. So we did that. There's also the, uh, the foundation, as it turned out, that um, concrete structure, it's underground, you can't perceive it. You'd miss it literally if you walk by it right now. Uh, that would play a key role in shoring up that end of the property. 
to allow for the, uh, you might notice if, you, if you've been up to the venue, you'll see there's a retaining wall. And behind the retaining wall, ultimately it might be unnecessary because of pretty significant concrete structure in the ground with all of the rigging and all of the uh, technical hookup that uh, is necessary to support a functioning board and a functioning live video board. So foundation was also laid for what might become of that spot. And we had a lot of conversations. You'll recall that there's a lot of wisdom in hiring the best people in the industry to inform, design, and pull off that complex. And um, it got conversation going about other venues, the quality of this one, the attention to detail, and the role it would serve in the community started conversation probably initiated by the athletic director about what board we might have there that soon led to other conversations that i'll detail that put us in a exploratory visioning kind of mode about what we might want to put a crowning jewel on what is arguably the best high school venue uh, in the state of maine for multi-sports and and uh, uh so i just describe it as this next level vision for the complex grew and we began to explore, involve Superintendent Tager in the conversations he came aboard. And uh, so anyway, uh, we started to explore the vision to kind of shape uh, what it might be. And here are a couple of things we settled on. We wanted to become the only high school venue in New England with a premier multi-use integrated live video board. Uh, we wanted, absolutely wanted, and saw opportunities as we work with Dactronics and others and Hustle, and I'll detail some of those conversations. We wanted to use the board to create and strengthen links, links between athletics and the co-curricular and the academic program, links between the high school and institutes of higher ed and uh, future employment, and we wanted it to be a community feature as it is. And the more that we looked, the more conversations we had, we saw those opportunities and we see uh, we continue to see them, which is why we're coming here for a deeper conversation. So we've had three conversations, really three primary ones along the way. We did launch conversations with Dactronics. That's the uh, industry leader in uh, live uh, video board installations of this type. Uh, at every turn, you'll see quality, you'll see an insistence on quality, you'll see insistence on strong curriculum and support for making something that is, uh, uh, you know, a standing resource, something that can have live, live role uh, within not only an event experience, but the ways in which kids can experience curriculum really have an integrated role uh, on and off of campus. We've had several meaningful conversations, as we always do with Huston University and in particular NESCOM, uh, their enthusiasm could not be stronger. And I'll just tell you, it means nothing to you and it meant nothing to me until I heard it about 10 times. D Dactronics is the industry standard. If you have Dactronics, uh, Huston, is, as I understand it, NESCOM might, be, uh, might not still be the case, but um, only the biggest and best programs that are preparing students to work in the largest venues, not just athletics, but all types of venues, Dactronics is the is the standard and they don't have a lot of um, experience and they don't have it in their curriculum and they're hungry and eager to support and engage with us because of the potential of Dactronics in and of itself. So I describe it as a rare opportunity to bring something like this to this region and to our students. And then I would just describe them thirdly as uh, Bangor and beyond alumni supporters members of organization, business communities, and educate and supportive organizations that all told has given us confidence that we should look at a next step. And a next step certainly requires your awareness and, and, uh, and certainly level of endorsement and exploration. So uh, what is an LVB? It's a large, high, large, high quality, programmable, streamable video board installed static on site that it's linked to physical operation within the complex, within, a, within a, uh, 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 an interface, within a, what we would assume would be the uh, press box, uh, allows for a combination of custom and uploaded uh, videos and uh, integrated audio, and again, controlled remotely and in real time to enhance the experience of any of a number of live events. So we began to explore them more fully um, I got some renderings. These are recent uh, uh, 
Dactronics projects from across various high school venues across the state. I'm going to show four of them to you. Uh, one is actually a college university installation, and I'm going to show them to you for different reasons. Each of them has something about it that speaks to what we might see uh, if we're successful in uh, moving forward. So this is sample installation from Woodridge High School in Ohio. I chose this one because actually this one's puny compared to the one that we would imagine having, but the dimensions are accurate and the styling of it is not overdone like some of them that you will see. This is a static board. The only difference between this dimensionally is that's that at the top you can see it says amazing uh, is the custom uh, video that's generated and controlled and queued up. And the bottom is the actual venue scoreboard that happens to be the FB2024. The only difference is it uh, that's four feet by this one's four by 25. It would be double that by what we imagine and run the whole length of the bottom of the board and be styled very much like this, uh, even maybe down even to the to the uh, color of uh, the coloring of things. This is very much understated. I would I would describe it. It has one point of of uh, of sponsorship along the bottom, et cetera. The next one is from uh, William Henry Harrison High School, and I chose this one for a reason. Uh, it's oddly like sitting about mid in the right third of the bleachers at Cameron looking out over toward Cohen School, and that board is dimensionally exactly the size that we've scoped out initially. It's 16 by 32, 16 high 32, the board part, the only thing that's a little bit different is that is a four foot scoreboard. You can see we went with eight feet because you can see that from even this distance, it might be a little difficult to make out numbers, but uh, that's the dimension, that's the scale. And, and again, I, I would say that if you imagine where the white banner along the bottom is uh, sponsorships, that would be scoreboard dimensionally in, uh, in what we see. Uh, this one is from uh, this one is dimensionally spot on to 16 by 32 LVB and 8 by 32 scoreboard. So that's uh, again along the bottom. And there, I understand, the Superintendent, we've talked about this. There's all kinds of layers to this, and we know that uh, that um, you know the I, I wouldn't want to get hung up on the idea of sponsorship and static namings. Um, um, I'm looking at the ways in which this device apparatus would be perceived as a person looks at it it's a prominent board and it speaks quality and it does quality things both in the experiencing of it and in the back shop to make uh what what, what uh, students and adults in combination do with it to uh come alive during a during an event um this one is i chose this i'll be honest with you, i chose this because uh uh i wanted you to know that there was an actual high school in america with the, with the mascot the goslings so imagine the fear <laughs> stricken in the heart of people who go to play the goslings. But uh, this is, truthfully, this is a 16 by 32 board. It has a split flanking top and bottom, or really uh, top and bottom, the score, which is also an option. And when I was describing the ways in which there might be some installations that do static sponsorships or things of that nature, that's how the board is rimmed around the outside. But, but in terms of... Uh, of uh, proportion and um, uh, features that one is very similar and this is i highlighted massachusetts uh, this is bryant university's uh, recent board this is exactly the dimension of our board eight eight foot scoreboard by 32 a 16 by 32 board oriented in the way that it might be um, set up uh, in future at but there's no high school in New England that has the boards, predominantly in the Midwest, creeping, creeping east, and Dactronics is um, is clearly, from our view, the the, uh, the the group to partner with in exploring further. So that's that's why we've landed on on that. So uh, just in terms of fleshing out those ideas of linkages, there are many. Uh, I, I've had it's been a while since I've followed up with. Uh, with Hudson University discreetly, but uh, uh, actually I'll cover that in the next slide. So the the athletic and uh, academic linkages we imagine and we fleshed out with with uh, Hudson ways in which our VPA courses uh, a course sequence could be established within the on VPA 
And the reason I say VPA, I didn't understand this, that uh, <clears throat> the core, excuse me, the core functionality, grab a water somewhere, toss me on. Thank you. <laughs> the core functionality of somebody creating graphics or design to fuel a board like this, the foundation is uh, Photoshop. And I, I didn't know that. And one of the one of the things about our high school is many students, you may not know this, many students take the Photoshop course and many students, even a semester at Bangor High School, develop the really high levels of competency in Photoshop. So I took the curriculum that Dactonics proposed as entry, intermediate and high skill use. And Eric Hutchins, who famously the head of the VPA department said, these are all foundations that are laid in Photoshop. So it trunks in VPA, but there are many other connections. Really what we see this as, as student-centered, student-operated, student-run with adult guidance. That's what we see as the winning model. We've proposed some extended linkages with Hassan that put their students down with ours. We haven't fleshed those out yet, but the overture is there and the enthusiasm is there. Marie Hansen is open to every depth of conversation that we're, we'll have that links Bangor High School to uh, Hassan. We see opportunities in the Business Academy, event management, event promotion, and we see what I think of as tr of true integration of co-curricular and extracurricular. You have students who are learning, applying their learning in a novel setting, and that novel setting is a place where the school is, is represented and competing and representing the school itself, peer-to-peer, peer-alongside-peer, -peer, and a, a student alongside adult. Uh, some other linkages. Uh, the Husson one is clear. These are actual courses I've confirmed with, with uh, Marie that have strong linkages that would either be articulated or duly enrolled at Husson. These are foundational to uh, NESCOM, many of the NESCOM pathways, IT120. You can read them as well as I can, but an initial conversation confirmed with Marie is that these things line up. That I was surprised at the uh, degree of audio engineering uh, it's lost, it escapes me now how strong that is, but one feature, it's not just a video board, there is a really strong audio integrated function that's key to operating the board successfully. Uh, and then again, that idea that if you're cooperating, if you're purchasing and putting to integrated use a Dactronics board, you're operating at the highest spheres. You're operating at a level that most don't get to and none would get to here, even at the state's premier communication school. And uh, well, linking to the community, movie night, anyone? Uh, there's been communities that have hosted events on the field, watching a movie. There's opportunities with Parks and Rec, not only to enhance their events, but to have uh, uh, ways in which uh, the board enhances those experience. Other outdoor event possibilities, we have talked about throwing around the idea of an outdoor graduation. It would have the same functionality that you see in the cross center to live stream and to feature graduates. And uh, just really in a lot of ways that we've explored more quietly, but in meaningful ways, this idea of generating community interest and support for school programming. And um, I think those are important as well. So really the next steps are, you know, earning some level of, of endorsement from the committee to explore funding sources and donations further. Uh, we've taken the step of activating uh, an existing uh, feature within the system with the cooperation of the business department, this idea of Friends of Bangor Rams giving a targeted landing point for straight donations, those who are interested in directly donating. There are rules, procedures, good norms around how you manage those well, how you threshold, how you how you direct, and those who might have had experience and followed along with the Friends of Cameron project. There was some earmarking of the donation, but there's also some caveats that went into whether or not what could the use of what was the allowable use, if not for a, a board, then for other things that relate to athletics. And we're at a point where uh, this endorsement is critical for taking the next step in terms of what are viable grants. We've had several conversations. What are other funding sources? We've had several conversations. What are other, as the board moves on, we think about supporting it ongoing. What are ways in which rent of revenue might be generated within policy to uh, fund the board ongoing or to, or as, a, as a kind of like a future equity share in those who sponsor the board for future uh, advertisement or future uh, 
role in the board. We understand there are a lot of policies associated with this, but this is, in my view, a, a really good, timely idea that takes a really great, prominent facility to the potential next level. And we're eager to share it with you and we'll be uh, open to any questions or directions you may have. Uh, Member Sork? Yes. Um, do you have an estimate of cost? We're talking million plus? Uh, uh, no. Uh, oh, good. Phew. <laughs> no, I'll share it with you. Okay. Uh, a lot of the, uh, well, I'll just tell you, just for context, I'm not hedging at all. Uh, this is a big project. It's an excellent resource. It's expensive. And one of the things that the uh, any group that uh, is willing to donate, one of the things that that encourages them is whether or not you have skin in the game. We've got skin in the game. We've got about probably about, uh, just under a third of the total cost in the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, the cost of the board as spec'd out and described, the Cadillac, is uh, about 450, 450,000. Okay. I have one more question for you. I noticed you linked it with Husson's audio and visual. Why not include our students who are also attending UTC? Certainly would. Yeah, I mean, would. we have quite a few out there. Yeah, and that's actually one thing. I won't go off too much of a tangent. Um, there is good partnership and there's good recognition. Like Husson, I would be reluctant to just jump right in with Husson as Bangor High School as an entity in things like uh, video audio production because I don't want to steal their thunder. I don't want to rob from Peter to pay Paul. Mm -hmm. We would more than uh, willingly uh, partner, certainly for Bangor High School kids, but beyond. We have quite a few in, in the uh, audio and the it's visual. It's a very strong program. It's a very good program out there. They also have the bridge program to go with Eastern Maine community. So yep. when I saw that, I'm going, because uh, we're the largest sending school yep. to UTC. So we have quite a few kids out there. Yeah, and their their instructors have direct experience with this type of work. Oh, absolutely. Really, really yeah. flourishing in that way. Thank you. Member Jondro. So the initial cost for the board itself is about four hundred and fifty thousand. Is that what we're saying? Is that including like is that a contract for years of support in there? Or is that just like to finish the board from uh -huh. the status it's in now with the foundation, with the linkages to build, install, and make sure the board is operational four fifty. Okay. And so then and then from that, I'm just curious, because anything technology bound, we need to be thinking about security and all of those things. Does um, Dactronics provide that? Is that it, like, do they have ongoing customer support for software updates and cybersecurity issues and yeah, things they like do. that? I've got about an 18 page contract. I could bore you with it all. Oh. It's, uh, they, <laughs> okay. they, they are professional in those words, quality, support, et cetera. Okay. This is what they do. This is all that they do. And they're very mission oriented and they do a lot of high schools, and they do a lot of integrations for the idea of building something that can sustain. So I'm confident that all of those questions about uh, you know, ongoing sustainability, quality programming, over, uh, confronting issues that might come up in implementation, I've gotten every indication from Dactronics that they're right beside you, should we, should we go with them. Excellent, thank you. Uh, Member Luciano. Um, the couple of things I wanted to touch on quickly were, do we have any idea on what the change in decibel levels will be? Um, as uh, I, I was looking at, at that because I know is there's, right in the middle there's of a something neighborhood. Steve's been doing, the gym, uh, Ms. Tager doing a good job managing. Uh, I don't, I do know, those things don't mean anything to me. I know. It, but I know but they they're in there because that's one of the first things I looked at. I was like, oh, we've got a community that surrounds the field uh, and we've got a high powered audio interface. It might compound a problem. I know that's a consideration. I know that's spec'd out in two or three pages. And I know that's something that we would do everything we could to mitigate. Okay. I'm also we... curious if there's any um, consideration for additional screen brightness with an LED screen. The other thing I wanted to make sure, obviously, this is a major question. Yeah, there was even, but... I'll tell you, that document is something else. I uh, would love to read it. That sounds I know. Fun. I know the concept of light measurement and candles, but yes, I don't have any point of reference. They talk right down to the candles. Per... I was like, it, your, your candela rate, I was like, you, an, an LED can go up to 50,000 candela per light. And so if there's a multiple, this is why, this is why I was curious. Um, and then the other thing I would be concerned with is the conditions um, up here weather-wise. I understand Mostly they're in the Midwest, but we have much wetter winters than they do. And so I'd be worried about concerns around, you know, has this been tested in a New England winter? Yeah, you, know, they, they have, you know, they talk a lot about cabinet construction, cabinet mm -hmm. installation. Everything is built custom. I think uh, 
they probably met harsh weather in Iowa, Ohio, Midwest, mm -hmm. more northern climates. I, I can only guess that that they've learned their trade well enough to to make things durable. They want quality products that last. So those are all considerations. I understand that. So I'm sure they'll they would they would speak to those things and get we'd, we'd get assurance of certain things before we moved anywhere near uh, any type of agreement. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Member Mundell. Yeah, just to follow on um, some of these concerns that have been expressed. So just to clarify, going forward, once the um, device is installed, is there ongoing maintenance that we would be responsible for financially, or is that something that um, is embedded in the initial cost? Well, I, I think there is some contractor that comes with because it is a specialized piece of equipment. And there are certain things that, as you think about in-kind, I made that concept of in-kind, well, we've got a good part of this project in, in the ground that's our in kind to start with. Uh, but we do have, they're stretched pretty thin lately, but we do have as high quality set of professionals in our maintenance department that can, uh, I think, be called upon. That would be spec'd out though, I think. Uh, I think the idea also would be, um, I mentioned the, a lot of people, the first thing they run to when they think of this is look at all the money we can make. And I would probably take a little different a little limit of view. It's not really like an enterprise fund, but there is income potential. There is the ability ongoing to sell real estate and airtime on that board. We might, if we got to point, that's certainly something the committee would, would want to discuss. Not only what are appropriate uses and how will we make sure we're advertising responsibly and in line with those types of things, but how much of that funding should go back into the maintenance, similar to the field. You know, those who put in make investments in turf fields are at the same time making investments of the eventual replacement cost. So we would, I think the wisdom, there would be wisdom in saying how much of this generation or how much of the generation of income or the budgeting would we need to commit to ongoing maintenance and hopefully not replacement, but everything does have a terminal life, I would say. Um, member, um, oh, oh. member Mundell, go ahead, ask you another question. Sure. Um, yeah, thank you for that. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm thinking of the cost, 450000 And I know, I mean, I'm, I'm encouraged to hear that there are interfaces with the curriculum, especially the VPA, which, um, you know, I'm a big supporter of and a uh, big cheerleader of and feel, have felt strongly for a long time that we need to put more resources into that program. Um, it seems like that's, um, you know, we've already got a lot of graphic design with uh, with Hutch um, doing doing those classes, um, so this seems pretty cool. Um, but um, I'm just wondering, kind of, if we can kind of think about this in the context of the the long term strategic plan and where this fits in, and knowing that we're well, yes, we're raising money here, but is this where we need to focus our energy in raising money um, when other programs? also have needs. So I just want to kind of keep that question in mind as we go forward. Thank you. Uh, I agree with a lot of the comments here. I appreciate the thoughtfulness. I hadn't thought of things like the sound or the light. Uh, my time on the city council, we went through a lot with the sound on the waterfront. I learned that I think a lot of us did that the orientation of it matters quite a lot. It seems like this might be pointed away from Howard Street, which is right there. Uh, maybe the bleachers kind of block Fruit Street a bit, and then straight across Mount Hope. This the lights from the stadium, anyways. But it is worth thinking about those things because if we start to proceed with this, and then there's a whole outcry from the neighbors, it's something to be mindful of. So I hadn't thought of that, but uh, in general, I'm very supportive. Uh, I I I want the best for our facilities. I want Bangor to have the best. I want people to choose Bangor. I think this will be a draw when people are looking at the landscape of where to live or to send their kids to school. It's part of the brand of Bangor being a high quality school district. And I think for younger people, especially, this is pretty flashy and in a good way, I think it, it's a draw. And the integration with the curriculum is excellent. I also really like the idea of it being a community space. I could envision 
spring and summer nights of having a movie playing and there's a lot of real estate there for kids to run around and be with their friends and their families and you could really have almost like an old-fashioned community picnic park night there with something on the screen I, I think there's a lot of potential for that and if we proceed with this i'm really going to hold ourselves to account to do that so that we really maximize the benefit of something like this I appreciate committee members Mundell's comment about where does this fit in the pecking order of needs. I think that's worthy of consideration, um, but I, I am supportive. I think it would be good for the school district and uh, I'm interested more in the fundraising strategy. I know you might not have it all laid out quite yet. I think it would be hard to raise $450,000 in the community without having some uh, corporate sponsorships. And I'd be interested to see what the plans are for naming rights or having business names up on that board when the cross center was launched for example they named every inch of that building that they could and they raised quite a lot of money off of doing that and there's always a bit of a balance because you don't want to you don't want to have it be like a nascar car up there that you know you don't want it to have we don't want to be the lights of las vegas here but uh, there's a number of good businesses around, I think, that are Bangor based or regional based that would love to have their name on something like that. And it, it's a good way to raise a chunk of that money, I think. So be curious, eager to hear how you plan to raise that money because it's not a small amount. But if there are donors out there that want to support this, more power to them. And I wish you the best of luck for the fundraising, but I'm certainly supportive of it in concept. Go ahead, please. Yeah, thanks. Uh, first of all, um, thank you, Principal Butler, for this is really, really well thought out, and I appreciate um, all the different things that you thought about. I, I did want to share with the school committee that I have shared this with Chair Hostin and um, Vice Chair Surrett previously, just and we thought it would be good to get this out in the open to talk about, but this is a beginning stage. Uh, we just wanted to kind of get it out there, and I am excited about this as well. And it would be pursuing donations and advertising. And I think um, Member Mundell's uh, thought is, is very timely because we're getting ready to talk about the budget, too, even though this is donations. But I do think a lot of what uh, Member Sprague said, too, um, when you look at attracting people to our town and you look at what students would like to be able to see, I think it would be a, certainly a, a very visible marquee that would sell our community well. Uh, to member um, Sprague's question, um, Ray is is not able to be here tonight. He's not feeling well. He's worked some with Kathleen, who does our our grants, and they have looked at some different ways to pursue sponsorship. So that would be something that we would be looking at. And I think lastly, I'd want to draw all of you to take a look at um, policy K H B because as this moves forward, if we have sponsors that move forward you will be able to weigh in as to whether you approve that particular sponsor as being wholesome for our community too. So maybe take a look at that policy too. It will maybe help you a little bit as we move forward, but thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Um, next, we have fiscal year 24 budget filters and budget timeline, Superintendent Tager. Yes, and thanks again, uh, Member Mundell for leading me into this. We're going to review the budget filters per policy DBA, and we'll review the uh, FY 2024 budget time table. Um, if you look at policy DBA, it's in, in your packet. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but just a couple of portions that might interest you. A proposed operating budget for the Bangor School Department shall be submitted by the superintendent of schools to the school committee each March. Um, I've been working with Director Heyman on that, and things are where they should be at this point, where it said filters. The following filters will be utilized when developing the proposed budget. What is needed to continue our pursuit of academic excellence for all students? What is the best interest of our students? What is financially responsible? And does the move it budget move us forward with the 10-year strategic plan? So you will want to be looking at the strategic plan as you make decisions as a school committee, and that's policy DBA. The school committee will review the proposed budget during the months of March and April, modifying recommendations as may be necessary to move accurately to reflect the priorities of the committee and to be consistent with the resources required. 
the committee will approve a budget for submission to the city council prior to the second Monday in April of each year. The other thing I want to touch on, it's also in your packet, is there's a Bangor School Department uh, budget timetable. It's just changed by about a day um, from last year, if, if any of you have looked at this. And the one thing that I would bring to your attention where it says January to be determined, superintendent review staffing analysis with administrators. Um, Director Heyman and I have met with all of our administrators. We've heard what their, their wishes are, and we'll be bringing that forward to you all for consideration as we move through this. Are there any questions? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to report of reassignments. Superintendent Tager. Yes. I'm reporting the following reassignments. Ellen Mosca from physical education teacher at point eight Bangor High School and point two Bangor Regional Program to physical education teacher at Bangor High School. Samuel Picard from special education teacher self-contained at William S. Cohen School to special education teacher resource room at William S. Cohen School. Don Beswick from special education teacher self-contained at Bangor High School to special education teacher resource room at Bangor High School. Any questions? Seeing none, we'll move on to report of resignations. Superintendent Tager. I'm reporting the following resignations. Carrie Mabry, Occupational Therapist District. Mason Walling, Special Education Teacher, Bangor Regional Program. Suzanne Whitmore, Point Six Six IEP Coordinator, Vine Street School. Any questions? Seeing none, we'll move on to business action items. The first is approving the regular meeting minutes for December 14th, 2022 school committee meeting. I'm recommending approval of the draft minutes of the December 14th, 2022 regular school committee meeting. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion, questions? All those in favor? Motion passes 6-0, thank you. 5-0. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, okay. Yep. You're abstaining, correct? Okay. Thank you. 5-0, thank you. Next, we have Member Sprague with donations. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chair. To Downey School from Bangor Savings Bank, snacks to support students having a total dollar value of $300. To Down East School from Hannaford, a cash donation to support students having a total dollar value of $366. To Mary Snow School from the Charleston Church, winter jackets having a total dollar value of $560. To James F. Doughty School from the DMT Fund in memory of Danielle Thompson, a cash donation having a total dollar value of $250. Thank you. Could I have a motion to accept these generous donations? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Motion passes 6-0. We have no introduction items. We do not. Right. Moving on to committee updates. First is an opportunity for comments and questions from the committee. All right, seeing none, um, we have no committee appointments. So we'll go to representative reports. Do we have any representative reports tonight? Okay, I, I have just a very brief one. It's not really a report, but our next uh, DEIB committee meeting is February 2nd at 3.30 p.m. All right, and now we have our student representative, um, Lucas, uh, with the student committee update. Uh, thank you. We just have a few brief updates for tonight from the student perspective. We have uh, students at Bangor High School are currently preparing for midterm exams in about two weeks. Uh, the debate team will be hosting the statewide championship on January 21st. And uh, Carolyn and I also wanted to congratulate uh, two Bangor High School students for some pretty exceptional accomplishments over the past month. Uh, Bangor High School junior, I might butcher her name here, I'm sorry, Inanna Pichini won first place in the Poetry Out Loud competition at the high school, and so she'll be headed off to regional soon. And we also have Nobody can hear any of that, could they? All right, here we go. <laughs> maybe, maybe you guys up front, but right. so here are the updates again. We have students at the high school are preparing for midterm exams in two weeks. Uh, the debate team will be hosting the statewide championship on January 21st at the high school. 
And uh, Member Saad and I also want to congratulate two committee members, or excuse me, uh, students at the high school for some exceptional accomplishments over the past month. Bangor High School junior Inanna Piccinini won first place at the Poetry Out Loud competition, and she'll be headed to uh, regionals at a later date. And we also have Bangor High School senior Nick Bieberstein was accepted into the United States Military Academy at West Point on Monday. So we want to congratulate the two of them. And that is all I have for student updates. Wonderful. Thank you for that thorough report. Um, we have no reports, uh, so we'll move on to information items, uh, important dates. Monday, January 23rd, 2023, we have a school committee member retreat from 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. at Camp Jordan. Wednesday, January 25th, 2023, there'll be a regular meeting at 7 p.m. here in the council chambers. Wednesday, February 1st, 2023, there'll be a regular meeting, 7 p.m., council chambers. Wednesday, February 15th, 2023, there'll be a regular meeting, 7 p.m. here in the council chambers. Wednesday, March 8th, 2023, another regular meeting, 7 p.m. here in the council chambers. And finally, Tuesday, May 23rd, 2023, school committee members retreat, 8.30 a.m. until 12.30 p.m. again at Camp Jordan. All right, last opportunity for any questions or comments from the committee. Okay, seeing none, can I have an, a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Passes 6 0, thank you. We're in adjournment. So, <laughs> so moved. <laughs>